Hi everyone, this is Mrs. GA, and today we're going to learn how to graph uh, secant and cosecant functions. Um, so before we start graphing them, it's important to think about what we know about um, cosecant and secant. So we know that cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, and we know that secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So building off um, these two facts, we know um, that when the sine of x equals zero, cosecant must be undefined. And likewise, when the cosine of x equals zero, we know that that means that the secant of x is also undefined, right? Because the reciprocal of zero is one over zero, which is undefined. Now that means that both cosecant and secant will have vertical asymptotes and they, those are going to occur whenever our sine or cosine graphs are equal to zero. So we're gonna be using this fact really to help us um, graph our two functions. So here's how I like to go about graphing um, secant and cosecant. I actually start by graphing the reciprocal function. So I'm either graphing sine or cosine first, and I'm doing that really lightly just kind of as a guideline. And then I'm gonna look at my reciprocal function graph and I'm going to draw a vertical asymptote every time um, the sine or cosine graph is equal to zero. So anytime it's crossing our midline, I'm going to draw in a vertical asymptote. And then um, from there, we're going to plot a point at each the hills or the valleys of sine or cosine because those are the times when um, sine and cosine are equal to one, which is when the reciprocal is also one. And then we're gonna sketch a parabola in each region. Um, so we're gonna have some parabolas going up and some parabolas going down. It's kind of a funky looking graph, but um, we really just base it off of what our sine or cosine graph looks like. Okay, so let's start by doing some um, parent function graphs. And we'll start on the left by graphing f of x equals, we'll start with cosecant of x. So remember when I'm graphing cosecant, I'm actually going to start by graphing sine of x, whose period is two pi. And we know that the amplitude is one. And let's call this one. Okay, so I'm gonna start by plotting my points in my four regions. So I know that sine always kind of starts in the um, middle at the origin. And then remember we go up to the maximum, back to the middle, down to the minimum, and back to the middle. So this is one full period of sine, and we can do a period going the other way. One, two, three, four. Remember I'm doing this really lightly because it's simply a guideline for us. So now that I have my guideline, I'm gonna look at this and say, okay, where is sine equal to zero? Because I know that that's where a vertical asymptote will occur. So I see that I have a vertical asymptote here, um, here, and notice that it is repeating every pi units. So there's actually a way we can describe this repeating asymptote. So you pick any place to start because we're gonna describe like the distance between each next one. So let's pick here. We do have an asymptote at x equals zero, and that's going to reoccur every pi unit. So the way we say that is we say plus n pi, and we're assuming that n represents any integer. So this shows us that we can add any multiple of pi and that will um, be a new vertical asymptote. So this is a way to describe um, a repeating feature of a graph. So we'll say zero plus n pi where n is any integer. Now remember the next step is actually graphing our cosecant function. So let's think um, here, right? The sine of pi over two is one, the reciprocal of one is one. So this is one of the points where both sine and cosecant have the same value. Um, so this is actually going to be a real coordinate of our graph. So that's going to occur at every hill or valley. So I'm gonna put our coordinates and then we use those kind of as the base of a little parabola. So the graph ends up looking like this and then it follows our asymptotes towards positive or negative infinity. So it's just going to repeat like this. So it turns out that two of these parabolas is a full period of cosecant because it's um, what matches a full period of sine. So if I asked for a couple 
exact coordinates. So I can just look at these coordinates right here. These are probably the easiest ones to name. So we'd have negative 3 pi over 2, positive 1, negative pi over 2, negative 1, positive pi over 2, positive 1, and then 3 pi over 2, negative 1. So you can look at those hill or valley coordinates to help get some exact points of our function. All right, so now let's um, sketch the parent function for secant. So here we're going to be graphing secant. So same general process. We are going to start by graphing um, our reciprocal function, which in this case is cosine of x whose period is um, 2 pi and whose amplitude is 1. I'm going to change the scale on my y-axis again. So remember, um, cosine starts at the maximum, so it will start at 1, and then we hit our four quadrants. 1, 2, 3, 4. So there's one period going to the right. We do another period going to the left. And here's our guideline. So remember, um, whenever cos cosine is zero, secant will be undefined. So I'm going to draw my vertical asymptotes wherever it's crossing our midline. Here, here, and here. So let's describe these repeating asymptotes. Pick one. So let's say x equals pi over 2. So I picked this one, but you can start with any asymptote that you see. And again, it's going to repeat every pi units. So I'm going to say plus n pi, where n is any integer. Okay, and then I'm going to mark my coordinates at the hills or valleys. And then they're going to turn into parabolas. So it looks like this. And there you go. And you can use these um, coordinates as well to name some exact points. So we could say negative pi, negative 1, 0, 1, pi, negative 1, so on, so forth. Um, so you can see that if you can graph sine or cosine, then graphing cosecant and secant is pretty straightforward. Um, you do need to make sure you are comfortable graphing those reciprocal functions before you move on to secant and cosecant. Okay, um, let's try an example together. So here we are graphing f of x equals negative cosecant of 1 half x. So we're going to start by graphing um, the same transformations but applied to sine. So it's going to be negative sine of 1 half x. So I see that we have a vertical reflection. And I also see that we're going to have a period change. So here our period is going to be, remember it's 2 pi divided by this value. So our period here is actually 4 pi, um, which means the scale of our graph. Remember, I always take the period and I split it up into four parts. Um, so our scale is going to be every pi. So each um, horizontal tick mark represents pi. And our amplitude is not changed. Our amplitude is still 1. Okay. So let's sketch our graph. Um, so remember, sine usually starts at the origin. Well, the parent function always starts at the origin. Usually it starts by going up to the maximum, but since we have this vertical reflection, it's going to go down. Um, so if it helps, again, I sometimes like to sketch in the midline and then my maximum value and then my minimum value. And then we just mark the four quadrants. So we go one, two, three, four. And then we can go to the left, one, two, three, four. So we have two full periods of sine. So now wherever um, our guideline is equal to zero, I'm going to draw a vertical asymptote. All right, let's see if we can describe this repeating asymptote. So remember, pick one. I'll say x equals 0. 
and let's see how often it's repeating. So here we have one at zero, here we have one at two pi. So it's repeating every two pi. So plus n two pi. Or you could say two pi n, that's totally fine as well. Um, so now at each hill or valley, we're gonna draw a coordinate and create our parabola. So that's one full period. And here's our second full period. So if we wanted to name a couple of our um, coordinates, we had negative three pi, negative one, we have negative pi, positive one, pi, negative one, three pi, positive one. And there you have it. So again, if you are comfortable graphing, sine or cosine, um, these reciprocal functions should be pretty um, straightforward for us to do. All right, go ahead and pause the video and see if you can give this one a try. We'll check our answer in just a few seconds. All right, go ahead and check your work here. Um, so you can see that first I started by graphing two cosine of four x. So this graph has a period of pi over two. Remember it's two pi divided by this value. And so I scaled my graph by every pi over eight. I split, it, I split this up into four parts. My amplitude is two. Um, so you can see that instead of starting at zero one, I'm starting at zero two. And then I go one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four. Anytime um, cosine is equal to zero, I draw an asymptote. So my asymptotes occur at pi over eight plus n pi over four. So they're reoccurring every pi over four units. And then find your hills and valleys and draw in your parabolas. And here's five exact coordinates from our graph. Okay, let's try one more together. This one's a little bit more um, complex. So here um, we are going to be starting with a cosine graph. So we're going to be graphing g of x equals one half cosine. Now here, remember, anytime you have a vertical or a horizontal stretch or shrink in addition to a shift, you need to make sure this value is actually factored out. So I'm going to factor out two pi, and then I have x minus one half. So again, it's really important that you remember to factor out. Um, this value before you assess the horizontal shift. Okay, so for this graph, um, it's going to have a period of 2 pi divided by this value, which is 2 pi. So the period is actually just one unit, which means I'm going to scale my uh, graph, my x-axis, every 1 fourth. So this represents 1 fourth. Um, I'm also going to note that we have a shift to the right one half, and we also have an amplitude of one half. So I'm actually going to call this value one, so one half is that first tick mark. So this is going to be my maximum. This is my midline. This is my minimum. And we know that um, cosine um, starts at the maximum. Um, so I would start here, except we do have that shift to the right one half. So that means I'm actually gonna start right here. So this is kind of my starting point and I go one, two, three, four, and I can repeat that same pattern going to the left. One, two, three, four. So that's two full periods. And again, this is just my guideline. Next, we're gonna draw in our vertical asymptotes wherever um, our cosine function is zero. And there you have it. Um, so that we can describe this by saying x equals one fourth Plus, so you can see that it's actually reoccurring every um, half of a unit, so n one half.
and now we can actually sketch in our graph. So here we have a parabola, here we have a parabola with a coordinate, another parabola, and another one, and then I can fit in another half of a parabola here. So there you have it. If we wanted to name some exact coordinates, we could do that pretty easily by looking at our graph. So we have negative one half, one half, zero, negative one half. Uh, we have one half, one half, and then we have um, one, negative one half. And we can even name another one if we wanted, but four is plenty. Okay, here's your last one. Uh, go ahead and pause the video, give this one a try, and then we'll check our answer in just a few seconds. Okay, um, so here we start by graphing our sine function. Um, here we do not have any period change, um, but we do have an amplitude change, and we're going to shift our graph to the left pi over two. Um, so we know that usually um, a sine starts at the origin, but notice that it actually started right here because we had to shift it to the left. And then we go up, middle, down, middle. So here's our guideline, repeat it another time. Our asymptotes occur at pi over two plus n pi, they reoccur every pi units. And then here are some exact coordinates that I got from the hills and valleys of my um, sine function. All right, uh, that is all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching.